biggest one all year. One, two, three. Hallelujah! Oh, yeah, that was awesome. Amen. That was awesome. Praise God. Amen. And I want to give you just one more chance, amen, because I think I recall one that was a little louder than that maybe a few months ago. I'm just saying. So this has got to be the loudest of the year. Y'all ready? One, two, three. Hallelujah! Woo, clap for the Lord. Amen. He's worthy. Amen. Let's all be seated in the house of the Lord. Amen. Let's go ahead and pray before we get into the word this morning. Thank you, Father God, in the name of Jesus, for blessing us, blessing us to be here. We thank you, Lord, for giving us yet another opportunity to sit at your feet and to receive fresh rama from heaven. I bind the work of the devil right now in the name of Jesus, that there be no distractions, but that your word will go forth and accomplish that which you sent it to. We thank you, Lord, and we surrender to the power of the Holy Ghost now in Jesus' name. Amen. Church said, Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Isn't God good? Is he really good or is he like, uh, he's okay good? Would anybody say, God is just okay good? Or would we all say he's really good? Okay, how about this? Has he been really good to you or he or has he been all right with you? You know what I mean? God's been all right. He all right. No, no, he's been really good. See, I, I'm, I, I believe in that. Amen? I believe in that. Well, let's get ready to receive the word. We've already said our Bible declarations and everything like that. Amen. Go ahead and let's clap it up. Amen. For everybody serving in this church, I appreciate you all. Every capacity. We could not do this without you. Amen? And, and I really do believe that. Amen? Some people say, oh, they'll make it. They don't need me. Yeah, we do. We need everybody. And so everybody is of great importance. And so we're very thankful for everything that you do and have done through this 2018. Let me just say that again. I want to thank everyone that's been serving in this ministry throughout this year. In whatever capacity, everything that you have done is greatly appreciated by us. And I want to comfort you in knowing that it is documented by God. Amen. So that means God has watched you. He has paid attention and he's going to reward you continually for your service unto him. Right? Because after all, he takes pleasure. What? Psalm 35, 27. He takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. Amen. So we all serve God with joy. Well, um, it's the last message of 2018. And I will say for us as a church, we've had our share of challenges this year. Um, and I'm sure many of you, because you're part of the church, you maybe have experienced some challenges here or there. But God wants to have us all be encouraged about what's ahead. Amen. Amen. Because after all, he's still on the throne. Yes. God hadn't retired. He doesn't retire. He don't quit. He don't even take any days off. Isn't that awesome? Matter of fact, let me add to this. God doesn't even go to sleep. Really? So when you're asleep, he's awake watching you. When you're asleep, come on, he's planning your next victory. Come on. When you're asleep, come on, he's uh, defeating that enemy that's been troubling you and, and bothering you. He's preparing a day for you to just walk into that victory. And this day is not just reserved for heaven. This is something that's happening now. And so we need to be excited and we need to have our eyes open to see the goodness of the Lord and to see what God is doing. I titled this message, Opposition, Opportunity. Opposition, Opportunity. And we have to pay attention to what God is doing in this time. Now, opposition, what is that? That means to oppose, to stand in the way of, to hinder, to obstruct, even to hinder progress. Have any of you experienced any opposition in 2018? I mean, if I can just get an amen. Maybe you felt like uh, there could have been something, someone, some situation that was maybe hindering, come on, somebody, my progress. I didn't have the progress. I didn't reach where I wanted to go. It seems like I had some obstacles along the way. Can I get amen right there? Anybody in here? So I know I'm preaching to the right church. Amen. I know you're watching online, but... 
you've had some opposition. And this opposition is really intended. Now, it may have hindered you, but it was sent to stop you. Amen. It was really intended to stop you. And so you can recognize victory right there because you can say, well, I'm still here. Matter of fact, it may, I may have been knocked back a couple steps, but glory to God, I'm still walking forward. Amen. I have not retreated. I have not turned into a total reverse. I'm back in gear. Amen. Look at your name and say, I'm back in gear. Amen. So now opposition is not all bad. Huh? Come on. I'm, I'm helping somebody in here. Come on. See, if, if everything was easy, it wouldn't be worth nothing. If everything was easy, it wouldn't be worth nothing. See, if everything was just laid out and given to you and it was so easy, it wouldn't be worth nothing because everybody would have it. And here's another thing. You wouldn't need any faith to make it happen. Amen. You wouldn't need any faith to make it happen. So if you don't need any faith to make it happen, you don't have nothing to glorify God for. It's just going to be what you did. Yeah. Amen. And so opposition is not all bad. You just have to know what to do with it. Amen. You just have to know what to do with it. Now, I want you to know right now that obstacles, now anybody in here, have you ever now, just be honest, have you ever rejoiced because you had obstacles? Have you, all, have you ever just said, thank you, Lord, that this is difficult. Praise the Lord. I'm so happy that I have obstacles. Nobody, nobody would say amen to that. But we ought to be saying amen to that. Because we, see, the reason we don't rejoice because of obstacles and opposition is because we don't know what it's there for. And we don't know what it actually does for us. It provides. Listen, I'm going to tell you right now, obstacles will get you to a height and a level that you cannot get to if you don't have something to step on. Come on, somebody. Opposition, obstacles, different things that come in your way is not all bad. You just have to know what to do with it. Obstacles become stepping stones to opportunity. See, some of y'all, you might have wanted to write that down. I'm telling you. The enemy would throw everything at you, but all of a sudden, you know, y'all remember Steven Seagal, amen? He, he was real smooth with it, but he didn't seem to throw too many punches. I don't know if y'all follow them type of movies, but his style was like, he would take all of your aggression and use it against you. And so it's going, he going to throw everything. I mean, they, the enemy, the, his enemies or whatever would try to do all this stuff against him. And he was like, well, it was their strength and their emphasis was needed because if they only threw like a soft punch, then all of this ain't going to work because they're not going anywhere. See, when opposition is coming at you, it's trying to take you out, but don't look at it as a bad thing. Go ahead and take the momentum, come on somebody, from it and use it for your advantage. See, this is what God is preparing us to do. He is preparing us to step up. Look at your name and say, you're going to have to step up this year. Now, don't think, oh, that means I'm, I'm, I'm going to live on easy street. Amen. Anybody that lives on easy street don't stay there long. Amen. That's why a lot of people win the lotto and then they lose it all. Because they don't appreciate it. There's no value. When everything's just given to you and you don't have to do anything, then all of a sudden people don't appreciate that stuff. But... We have to understand now, if I've gone through a little things, I've, I've, I've endured some things, then I want to understand this. Obstacles become stepping stones to opportunity. But you must maintain kingdom position. This right here is key. This is something that I want you to grab a hold of for this coming year. Obstacles become stepping stones to opportunity. Look at your neighbor and say, I need something to step on to get there. See, and it's not other, uh, each other. We don't need to compete and step on each other. You know what I mean? People kicking and scratching, trying to fight to get up the same ladder, and God's got another ladder for you. He got a special place for you. You don't need to compete with anybody. You don't need to fight. Oh, well, I don't know why they got this and I didn't get this. Because what you got is for you. 
And if God gave you what he had for them, you wouldn't really enjoy it because it wasn't made for you. That's something we have to understand. We got to stop comparing ourselves to what's happening in everyone else's life. But let me pay attention to what I'm stepping on. Let me pay attention to what I'm stepping on. In order for us to use these obstacles as stepping stones, we must maintain kingdom position. We must maintain kingdom position and kingdom focus along the way. So what does that mean? As I'm walking on my faith walk, come on, some might come at me on the right. I can swerve a little bit, but I got to stay on track. Amen. Come on. Because if I get off track, then I'm going to end up somewhere else, come on, that I did not want to be. But along the way, I start to realize that, oh, God is providing. See, sometimes if you don't go through anything, you don't see the steps that lead you up. And so what ends up happening is people, they just go from trial to trial and they stay in the valley and they never get out of the mountain, up, up to the mountain. How many know if you're in the valley, after a while, you'll get comfortable there. And you'll realize I'm in the valley and I see all these trees and I'm comfortable, but then there's a mountaintop and God says, I want you to go to the mountaintop. But if you're not careful, if you haven't been paying attention, you haven't been in your word, you haven't been paying attention to what Pastor Troy is teaching you, then you'll say, well, that mountain is going to require too much work. I mean, because I already got my tent set up down here. I mean, I got used to it. I mean, I... I'm only cold on certain day. I mean, this thing, I'm getting it. You see what I'm saying? And God is like, I never intended for you to stay there. I want you to come up out of there, but you're going to have to use some strength. You're going to have to put in some work. You're going to have to learn how to turn this. See, some of you are going to stop meditating. Come on. And see, now in that valley, people oftentimes in the valley, they make an altar out of their problem. They make an altar and God is saying, I am the only one to be worshiped here. Why are you worshiping? Come on, your problem. Why are you worshiping what you didn't get last year? Why are you worshiping and still meditating and you will not use that? I gave that to you so you could see. Now, God is not sending all these obstacles, but he's given us the power to turn them around. What the enemy intended for evil, God will turn it around for good. But what are you doing? Are you maintaining a kingdom position? And a kingdom focus? Or have you become a complainer? A whiner? Come on, somebody. Where you begin to glorify everything that's not right in your life. God says, I want you to start stepping on some stuff. Okay, God, then give me good things to step on. No, no, no. Because if it was that good, I wouldn't want you stepping on it. So sometimes you got to have some ugliness to step on. Can I get amen right there? I'm just, I'm just, I'm in here preaching, man. Sometimes you got to have some, come on, disappointment to step on. Come on, somebody. Sometimes you got to have a little discouragement to uh, step on. Come on, somebody. Sometimes you got to have some depression to step on so you can get to that next level. Amen. Church don't want this. I don't want, I just want everything to go easy. It never will. You became a Christian. So you got the biggest target ever known to mankind on your back. And this is one of those targets that is in, it's on, it, it works on every clothing you put on. So meaning you can't take it off. It's going to project. It's going to be seen. And so you have to be a person that says, you know what? I am going to stay on task. I'm going to keep this kingdom position and this kingdom focus along the way. Now go to 2 Chronicles. Look at your name and say, God's got a victory on the other side for me. Now, I'm going to tell you something, man. If, if we don't realize this, then, then we will lose focus. And we start looking at the wrong things. And God is saying, I am causing you to rise above. I'm causing you to come up to that next level. Amen. I mean, it's just like you're going through something. You start to train. If you don't train at level one, how many know you're never ready for level two? Hmm? Come on. Some of y'all 
Well, we got kids in college, and some of us remember going to college. And sometimes they, they instruct you to take classes in a sequence because if you try to jump into the other one, you weren't really ready. Can I get amen right there? You weren't ready for it, amen. And there was some stuff you were supposed to learn. Come on, some of y'all, there was some stuff you were supposed to learn in 2018. And if you don't recognize what it was that you were supposed to learn and grab a hold of, you won't be ready for 2019. You just can't jump ahead like that. Amen. You can't jump ahead like that. So you got to be prepared. Second Chronicles. Uh, you know what? I thought I put my. Amen. Let me get there. Now, let me just make sure. So we've had opposition. Anybody? Anybody in here? Can you think of, uh, I don't want you meditating on the bad, but just for a second, just, you know, close your eyes and say, yeah, I've had a few, I've had a few things. Anybody in here? Come on. You had a few things. Amen. Okay. And so. It's not going to be something that we meditate, but we're going to turn that thing around. So I don't want you to forget about it. Amen. I don't want you to ignore it. Amen. I don't want you to be like, la, 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 I don't know. No, no. Yeah, you need to recognize, yep, that was there. I see it. I know what it was. And you got to be able to identify it so that now you'll know how to step on it to get to that next level. Amen. You got to know how to step on it to get to that next level. But once again, you have to maintain kingdom position. What is that? What's your kingdom position? Well, we know that in, don't turn there, but in John 1, 12, to as many as believed, he gave them power to become sons. And we know I've been teaching this for such a long time that that word sons has nothing to do with gender. It has everything to do with what? Position. And so now my position in Christ gives me delegated authority. But if I step out of position, come on, there goes your power. Amen. There goes your power. And so I cannot be complaining and murmuring. Okay, so we got to go. We got to divert real quick. Put John 1.12 up there real quick. But then after you just flash that in the King James, then I want us to jump up to Philippians. We're going to look, uh, see, but as many as received him to them, he gave power to become sons, even them that believe on his name. Amen. So that doesn't matter. If you're a believer in Christ, whether you're male or female, you are a son. And that means you are seated at the right hand of God. That just means your position in Christ. Amen. So look at your name and say, I am a son. son. Okay, we got it, right? We're clear on that. There's no confusion in that at all. Okay. Okay. So now, if I realize I must now, if I go through some difficult times in life, I have to maintain, I'm repeating this because I got to make sure you get it. So what are we supposed to maintain? Kingdom, position, and what else? Kingdom focus. focus, Amen. It's where you're standing and what you're looking at. Can I get amen right there? This is, I'm going to make this easy for you. It's where you're standing and what you are looking at. Kingdom position. I know who I am in God. The devil can't back me up off of my position. And glory to God, I'm not about to look at my obstacles when I should be stepping on them. I should be looking at my opportunity. Amen? And guess what else? You're not going to do, as long as you maintain a kingdom position and a kingdom focus, you know what you will not do? You will not do this. Murmur and complain. If you hear yourself, I believe in practical application. If you hear yourself murmuring and complaining, what do I mean by that? Why? I don't know. Oh, y'all know what it is? Do, do I need to give any more examples? Or you, are you, y'all want to share one of you? No, I'm just kidding. Don't tell me what you've been complaining about. But we know that that's easy to do. Focus on what? Now, when you're complaining... Who are you focusing on? Think about it, see? And then what are you looking at? Are you seeing like what God can do or are you maybe seeing the problem at hand? I'm just, so it's probably the problem at hand that you're kind of, so, so in that situation, you've kind of lost kingdom focus. 
Amen? You, you, you kind of, and you may have even forgot about your what? Kingdom position. You may have forgot about where you're standing because if you realize who, where you're standing, then you know who you're standing next to, who's with you, even who's in you. Then all of a sudden, then now, nothing that looks like a problem to you can really stop you. Amen? But if there's focus in there, then what happens? We start to murmur. Come on. And so Philippians 2 Verse 14, he says, do all things. Look at your name and say all things. all things. That means everything. Philippians 2, 14, do all things without murmuring. See that? And disputing. That's in the King James. And let's look at this in the Amplified. Do all things without what? Huh? Let's put that up there in Amplified, please. Philippians 2, 14 and Amplified. Is it still working? Amen. I got all this in me, man. I, I, I'm, I just, it's so much word. Do all things without what? Come on, y'all need to read this because he, grumbling, hold on, anybody? Any, ask your neighbor, say, have, have you heard me grumbling at all? I just, I don't. I don't know if, 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 I don't think I was, but have you heard me doing it? See, because sometimes, you know, people will tell you about you more than you'll tell yourself about you. And sometimes we don't even hear stuff because we've been doing it so long. Come on, some of y'all been complaining and murmuring so long, you don't even know you're doing it. You've been whining so much, you haven't even heard yourself whining. And somebody played a tape back on you, you'd be like, oh, I thought I was a praiser. <laughs> yeah. Do all things without grumbling and fault finding. Hmm. Y'all probably don't want me to stop here, but uh, let me just give you some advice. Continuing to point out whose fault it is does not get you anywhere. As a matter of fact, when you're sitting in the valley and you're down there, and God is trying to get you to look to the mountaintop, but instead you say, well, you know, I'm down here because sister so-and-so. Well, if, if he would have did this, then I wouldn't be here. And so guess what happens? You start to magnify and promote, y'all ready for this? And exalt that person over your life. And God is saying, I got stepping stones. I got a mountaintop I want to get you to, but you keep blaming them. You keep blaming that one over there. You keep blaming everybody for your situation. But at one point, are you going to be able to obey the word and do all things without grumbling and fault finding and what? Complaining, And then the Amplify says you're really complaining against God because if God is in charge of your life and you're complaining about where your life is, then you're actually complaining against God. Dang, I never looked at it like that. Amen? And so we're not supposed to stay in these situations. It says complaining against God and questioning and doubting among yourselves. Lucian your name and say, stop all of that. That ain't getting you nowhere, man. You know what I'm saying? We got too, you know, we got too many vacancies on the mountaintop. I mean, we got the, the valley is packed out. Everybody in the valley just bumping elbows. But, you know, the, there's plenty of space on the mountaintop because don't nobody want to do what it takes to get there. Amen? And so God is moving us somewhere. Now I want us to go back to our text, 2 Chronicles. I'm going to show you something very powerful this morning. And so 2 Chronicles chapter 20, and we're looking at verse 1. I'll just start reading in the King James. It came to pass after this also that the children of Moab and the children of uh, Ammon and with their others beside the Amorites came against Jehoshaphat to battle. So let me just paraphrase this. Jehoshaphat realizes that they're in a tough situation. Not only is one group of people coming after them, but some folks and teamed up. How many of you ever been that way in your life where you feel like, man, my opposition is great? Yeah. It seems like I got people against me to the right and to the left, and now I'm trying to figure out who's really for me. 
I used to think this one was for me. Come on, how many y'all ever had that happen where you, it seemed like somebody was for you, but then they flipped on you like, oh, okay, Ooh, I, did. <laughs> I thought you was with me, but now all of a sudden it seemed like I didn't, okay, uh-huh. Amen? Well, that's not really like a comforting thing, you know, when that happens to you in your life. Amen. When you find out that your opposition is great and then you find out your opposition has teamed up. Amen. Amen. And so verse two, then there came some and then you always got this person. Somebody will always. That's why I tell you, you know, don't watch the news too much. I know some of y'all it's just in your blood. That's okay, but I pray the word is more in your blood than that news. Amen? Because sometimes you may ask yourself, why am I so um, pessimistic? I'm just, you know, it just seems like everybody, they're taking over. The, the aliens are coming. I'm just, we're going to be taken off by alien. Not me. See, I don't meditate on alien abductions. I meditate on the word. I meditate on what God can do. Come on, I meditate on I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor I see begging bread. I mean, that's what I'm meditating on. Amen. Psalm 37, 25. That's what I'm meditating on. But some of y'all may be more advanced than me. And so you can handle those things. I can't handle the news like that. Amen. I'm just not on that level. So I stay out of it. Amen. And. But there's always going to be somebody that's going to. Now, here's one thing you won't hear. I I'm, I'm, feel like I'm probably correct in saying this. You probably won't hear this on the news. Everything's getting better for you. The best days are yet ahead. You and your family, especially the Christians, if you're a Christian, you're going to be blessed. Look out for prosperity coming your way this year. Have you seen that on CNN or Fox or any, any news program? Hmm. So how good is it? Probably not that good, huh? But we got that all throughout this Bible. And so we need to shift what we're focusing on because it'll start to take away your optimism. And then you find yourself, you wake up to the reality that you are in a tough situation and you do have opposition and then you have other people echoing. Oh, you know, you're in a bad spot. I just came by here to tell you, hey, everybody's after you. Oh, thanks. That really helped me, right? Okay, let me continue. Then, verse 2, Then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea uh, on this side of their Syria. And behold, there be um, Haizman Tamar, which is... Okay, that's a lot of pronunciation. Amen. But listen... <laughs> Y'all get it. It's some opposition. Amen. It's some opposition. Amen. A whole bunch of folks coming against you. Amen. Praise God. And so what? And Jehoshaphat, verse 3, and Jehoshaphat, what did he do? He feared and set himself to seek the Lord and to proclaim a fast throughout all Judah. Well, at least this led Jehoshaphat closer to God. See, some people face opposition and they run from God. But you should actually be running to God and seeking him and getting closer to God because God is going to build you up and strengthen you. Amen. He doesn't want you to turn away from him when you're going through opposition. And so Jehoshaphat realizes that now there's all these people coming against me. And so what is he going to do? He's going to fast. So that's sometimes fasting. You got to fast for that revelation. You don't just fast because the church is fasting. You may, God may lead you to fast on your own. Sometimes you might have to fast. You might be dealing with a situation. Well, we fast so we can quiet the noise. We fast so we can just quiet everything else and just be still and hear God and, and get the help. And we want to come to him and get the help and we don't want anything interfering. Amen. And so he says, Joseph had feared and he set himself to seek the Lord and to proclaim a fast throughout all of Judah. And Judah gathered themselves together to ask help. What well, they do? Man, how many people are in a valley situation and they don't even ask God for help? Amen. You realize that. Don't get used to it. Ask God to help you out of it, to help you into a better situation. They gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. 
even out of all the cities of, Ju of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. Amen? Now, verse 5, I want to look at verse 5 through 7 in the message translation. Can we put it up in the message translation? Now, remember this. Kingdom position. What else? Kingdom focus. You must remember, God will turn obstacles into opportunities. It will be stepping stones to opportunity. But you've got to maintain kingdom position and kingdom focus. Let's look at verse 5 in the message. Then Jehoshaphat took a what? Position. Come on, somebody. He let it be known he took a position before the assembled people of Judah and Jerusalem at the temple of God in front of the new court. And so this is a position of power, but it's in front of folks. It's just like me up here at this pulpit. I'm going to stand in this position and let everybody that ever hears me preach or watch me, whatever, know that I'm trusting God. I don't have all the answers. But I know who to go to. Amen. I'm never going to be a pastor that relies on the answers that man can give me because man's answers are not always the best. Sometimes what man wants you to do, it is because of their, there's an ulterior motive on the back end. And you know what's unfortunate about this? We don't learn about the ulterior motives until later. So it would be better for us to do what God says and to trust God and to move in the direction that God has for us right now and to make sure we stay focused. Because if I find myself complaining and murmuring and doing all those things, I've lost focus. I'm not focusing on God's ability and what God can do. Amen? And so Jehoshaphat made it clear. Can you put that up there again, please? So then Jehoshaphat took a position before the assembled people of Judah and Jerusalem at the temple of God in front of the new court. Next verse. And said, look at this. See, when you're in the right position and your focus is right, come on, you'll know what to say. Come on, you'll know what to say when it's your opportunity to speak. And he said, oh God, God of our ancestors, are, are you not God in heaven above? And ruler of all kingdoms below. You hold all power and might in your fist. No one stands a chance. See that? Hmm. Are you saying that when you're facing adversity? Come on, when you're facing a trial or you're facing a situation that seems difficult, do you find yourself standing, talking to God like, God, you are God alone. Can't nobody stand. Come on, y'all. Come on. See, we don't find, if we're not finding ourselves doing this, then we have stepped out of position and our focus has been shifted. So now we're doing something else. So instead, in our prayer, we start talking about why. Oh, well, why is it happening to me? Joseph had didn't say, why are they coming after me? He had to draw attention to his God. And he had to do that from his position. Let's look at those verses, those same two verses. Um, maybe I only looked at five and six. That's okay. But look at it in the NLT. So verse five through seven in the NLT. Jehoshaphat stood before the community of Judah and Jerusalem in front of the new courtyard at the temple of the Lord. In verse six, he prayed, O Lord, God of our ancestors. Look at this. You alone are the God who is in heaven. You are ruler of all the kingdoms of the earth. You are powerful and mighty. No one can stand against you. Next verse. Oh, our God, did you not drive out those who lived in this land when your people Israel arrived? And did you not give this land forever to the descendants of your friend Abraham. So let me just explain this. You're in that right place because you have not moved from your kingdom position and you have not lost your kingdom focus. So you're able to go in there. Man, seems like I got opposition. Remember, Jehoshaphat found out that people, not just one army, but three different armies of people are coming to take him out. He realizes that he cannot defend himself. 
Because some of you will go as far as you can in your own power. Come on, you come into a financial trial, what do you do? Get another job. But at some point, you're going to realize, I ain't got enough hours in the day. I can't work no more jobs. I'm going to need God. Oh, come on, somebody. I'm going to need God to come through. I'm going to need God to bring some supernatural. But listen, you disqualify yourself from the supernatural every time you step out of position and every time you lose focus. So all of a sudden, you're not looking at your God no more. You're looking at your bill. Oh, come on, man. Come on, somebody. You ain't worshiping your God no more. You're meditating on that bill. You're meditating on that payment. And so what does it do? It causes you to step out of position. Why? Because I'm not worshiping God and honoring God. Let me help you understand. With your position, obedience comes with that. You always obey God when you're in position. You, all, you don't guess about, oh, am I going to tithe or not? That ain't, huh? Come on, man. We don't guess that. When I'm in position, things are automatic. I'm talking about it's automatic. You don't think twice. When you are out of position, you ponder. You speculate. You start to wonder, oh, well, I don't know. Now, see, you didn't got out of position because every time you start guessing about God's word, you know you ain't in position. You know good and well, if you guessing and speculating about what God's word already told you to do, then you are out of position and your focus is shifted. You're no longer looking at, come on, Jehovah Jireh, the Lord my provider. Now you need to start focusing on this little bill. Amen? That happens all the time. You know what that stuff does, though? Keeps you in the valley. It keeps you in the valley, man. All, what that does is it's, it, it empowers you. Come on, somebody. It empowers you to make another altar. How many of y'all can say, you know what? I'm not going to be in the same place next year. Amen. Enough of this, man. God's moving us into another level of prosperity. And when I say prosperity, I'm talking about total life prosperity. Come on, some of y'all need to be healed already. That shit already happened. Huh? That's mountaintop stuff, though. See, I'm up in here preaching. That's mountaintop stuff. But you know what God will do? That's why I asked you to go on this fast and seek revelation, because some of y'all, you need a healing, but through your fast, God might tell you, you need to stop eating that. See, I ain't getting a lot of amens, man, up in here. I'm getting everything God has for me. I'm not, I'm not going to be defeated. I will not be denied. I'm not going to spend another year in the valley. Glory to God, it's mountaintop time for me. I need to get up there. There's space for me. There's stuff up there for me. I need to be able to get up there and worship my God from there too. Because we all learn how to worship God in the valley. And we cry and all that and everything. That's okay. But at some point, you ought to want mountaintop experience. At some point, you ought to say, I don't take no medication. At some point, we might want to say, I don't owe nobody nothing. Come on. At some point, we might want to say, I pay everything cash. I'm just, you know, I'm just saying, man. I'm just, you know what I'm saying? But that's mountaintop stuff. But in order to get there, you're going to have to realize that, oh, there's an obstacle. Come on, can I get amen right there? There's an obstacle that I need to step on. Now, God is leading me. I realize this, that God is not causing me to be comfortable in the valley. He is leading me out. But I'm going to have to do something. I'm going to have to make sure that I have kingdom position. Jehoshaphat made sure of that. That's why you got to fast sometimes because... God will tell you, you done got out of position. You're like, huh? Me? God will say, yeah, you've been running your mouth. You've been gossiping. Me? No way, Lord. No, yes way. Ooh. He'll just get on you. He say, you want to get out the valley? You say, yes, Lord, I want out. He'll say, here's the path you have to take. And you say, that one? Aw, I'm going to take a nap. That's what people do in the valley. They keep taking naps. 
Because they don't want to do what it takes. Are y'all with me? See, God's got answers to every situation you face. I'm guaranteeing you, God's got a way for you to rise above that thing and step into your promised land. He has it for you, but it ain't going to happen to you like osmosis. Somebody may have been deceived by somebody, but if you think that you're just going to wake up and tomorrow everything is good and you did nothing, then you're wrong. Because even in the act of Jehoshaphat, even calling a fast, he had to do something. Then he had to say something. Y'all with me? What did he say? He had a chance to say something. And he had to say something in front of some people. Come on, some of y'all are quiet Christians. You complain in front of the world, but you don't glorify God publicly. Come on, somebody, you have no problem complaining about the traffic, the weather, your money, the everything, the news. You'll tell everybody that, but rarely do you talk about how good God is. Why is that? Amen? Amen. Jehoshaphat said, God, you are. God, and nobody can stand up to you. You know what he's doing? He's taking him, he's positioning himself for power for a greater breakthrough, a greater victory only that God can provide. Amen? Only that God can provide. And so now, let's skip down. Let's go back to the King James and let's skip down to verse 12. Verse 12, O our God, wilt thou not judge them? So now he's starting to recognize himself. He's starting to recognize where he stands. Sometimes you got to realize you can't do it. Amen? Come on, you ever been in that situation where you're just tired? you just like, forget it. Amen? You just, I ain't going to do it. I ain't not today. Yeah, I ain't got time to deal with this today. I'm going to have to let this go. But there's those times and then there's those other times where you are out of options. Like, it's not just that I'm tired, but I don't know what to do. Y'all with me? Oh, no, you know, no, no, no. I don't know. Now, I'm not telling you to go around and glorify it, all this and, you know, stuff that you can't do. But this is how you come to God. Your kingdom position and your kingdom focus will help you to do this. And so verse 12, he says, O our God, wilt thou not judge them who there are the enemies that are coming against us? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us. Neither. Y'all see this? What does he say? So let me, let me think about this. I found out, God, I got great opposition. Now, what he did, though, that was right is when he started this all out. Y'all remember that, right? Up in the earlier verses, he said, God, you're mighty. Come on, who could come against you? Didn't, didn't he do that? Didn't he remind? Then he even reminded God that, you know, you gave us his land. Come on, some of y'all need to remind. I'll be reminding the devil all the time. You can't take what God gave me. I had to remind myself, God... Hey, I know you gave word of life to us. You put us on assignment, so I don't care what nobody says. We can't be stopped because you gave it to us. You put us on assignment. You called us to this valley. I can remind God of that. So you did it, God, not me. But they're coming after me, Lord. They've been on the right. They've been on the left. Come on, they teaming up and plotting, strategizing. And we don't know what to do. It's okay to come to that place in your life. Amen? Because I done seen God turn some tables mightily. Ooh, I'm talking about turn. Come on, I done seen God turn some tables just bam. I'm talking about people calling you want to get money to where people now calling you trying to give you money. Come on, some of y'all ain't going where I'm going, but I'm just going to preach it anyway. It's kingdom position and kingdom focus. As long as you stay in position and you stay focused, no devil from hell can stop you. 
God will put somebody else up in there if they need to. He'll put you on the hearts and minds of others. I'm talking about people will move into this country from another country to bless you. Man. Y'all with me? I mean, come on, somebody. If we just stay in position, stay focused, do what we're supposed to do, have our minds be set on the right things. And this is what happened in this situation. He says, neither know we what to do, but. What does that but do? Cancels out what you just said. I don't know what to do, but. Now what comes after the but matters most. Amen. But our eyes, what? But our eyes, we don't know what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. And so he makes it clear. See, we don't know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. This is what you've got to learn to do in your life. So, uh, Proverbs 3, 5, just put it up there, but you guys tracking in your Bible, you don't have to turn, but make a note. Proverbs 3, 5, 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord, right? You ever been in a situation where you don't know what to do? Well, what you need to do right away is trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not to your own understanding. Your own understanding will lead you the wrong way. So stop trying to figure it out. Because sometimes you're going to say, I don't know what to do, but I'm going to trust you, Lord. And then the answer is coming. He just may not have given it to you yet. And so you got to trust him. Verse six. But then you got to be willing to do what he says because sometimes God will tell you to do something that don't make sense to you. But how many know if you want his results, you better do what he said. If you want to keep getting your results, then you keep doing what you've been doing. But if you want to get his results, then you have to do what he said. So in order to do what he said, you got to trust him with all your heart and lean on to your own understanding. In all thy ways, what? Y'all see one word up there? All. Huh? Oh, well, you know, I not, you know, you know, because some of y'all give some stuff to God. I'm going to just go ahead and just expose you. I'm not going to say your name. But some of y'all give some stuff to God, but other things you keep to yourself. Because you don't trust God there yet. And so you don't release that. And so how do I know you don't release that is because you keep falling back to old habit patterns. But if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. So I can't fall back on what I used to fall back on if I truly gave it to God. If I gave it to God and it got burnt up at the altar, then I don't have nothing to fall back on. All I can do is keep going forward. Somebody say, I'm in gear now. Man. God trying to get us to the mountaintop, but we keep falling back on the stuff that, oh, because we didn't give him that yet. Huh? Everything, this is what it says, in all thy ways, acknowledge him. Kingdom position, kingdom focus, in all of your ways, acknowledge him. And then who's going to direct your path? Everything within you is saying go left and you're about ready to go left. You didn't line it up. You didn't study it out. You didn't meditate it. You didn't research. You didn't read everybody's book on it and you feel comfortable. Then God says go right. Wait, wait, wait. I got too much time vested. I don't care how much time I invest it. I will let it all go. And I'm going the way of the Lord. Because that's the only way to reach the mountaintop. That's the only blessed path. It's not going to be on this other side. It's not, so you got to evaluate your life sometimes. Sometimes you got to think about where am I right now and how did I get here? And then sometimes God will say, go ahead, say it. Mm -hmm. Say it. I'm listening. And you're going to say, I'm here because this is where God wants me to be. And God will say, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> God will start doing this on you. Uh, pump the brain. Uh, uh, uh. Let, me, let me run this back for you. And he'll take you back. Through your life. And then he'll start to replay, come on, some of your conversations you had with your spouse. Come on, I can't get no amen right there. But he'll start telling you, come on, some of y'all been speaking all this death and speaking all this stuff. When it shows up on you, you're like, well, I don't know why. God is like, eh, I'm waiting. Ask me. I know why. <laughs> Would you like a replay? <laughs> he'll take you all the way back amen. to all that sickness you were speaking. 
He'll take you all the way back. And then he'll take you to the, oh, man, I, let me just move. Thank you, Lord. Let me just, uh, whoo, glory to God. I don't want to, I don't want to be too mean. But I'm going to tell you one thing. We got to take responsibility, man. In all your ways, acknowledge him. There are no days off. All your ways. I don't care what kind of news comes your way. They was talking about it today. Brother D said, I will bless the Lord. And his praise, you know, I will bless the Lord at all times. But then he said, and his praise shall what? Continually. Continually. Does that mean, what does that mean to you guys? To me, it sounds like all the time. Seems like that's what I'm doing all the time. Amen. That's what I need to adjust my life to be able to do that. And so now if we look at this, they have this opportunity and they say, we don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you. And so they made it clear. Now, Kingdom position, kingdom focus. Go to Psalm, Psalm 121. We're coming back to Jehoshaphat. I'm going to close uh, soon. <laughs> I got it, man. This is the last one of 2018. We got to get this right. We got to make sure we... I told you guys this would be a springboard service. Sometimes things that are springboards for our spirit are not always springboards for our flesh. So sometimes we got to hear stuff we don't want to hear. God is, God is like, uh, enough of that. you running around, jumping and celebrating. Just do something this time. Do something this time. Be for real. Be intentional about this. Get out of your emotions and get into the pathway and the plan that I have set for you. Amen? Praise God. So, Psalm 121, just look in the King James, verse 1 and 2. So he says, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help. Where's your help coming from? See, verse two, my help comes from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. So here they are, Jehoshaphat saying, we don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you. Why? Because they know their help is not coming from themselves. Some of y'all need to go on to this next year and stop calling all your relatives. Duh. You telling them everything. They don't, man. Some of them don't even like you. Stop doing all that stuff. And look to God. Come on. And stop setting high expectations of everyone else. You know what I mean? We can't blame nobody no more, church. We can't. I can't blame y'all when that this. If they would have just, it ain't got nothing to do with you. Just like you can't go blame your boss. Well, you know, if they didn't make me work on this, that, that, if they would just change this system, if I didn't have to use this, or who? I don't think those complaints are really helping you. Amen? Is it? Come on. I know the kids, sometimes they complain about their teachers. I'll be honest. Has that ever helped you? Doesn't help. I know that. I have plenty of teachers I complain about. Didn't matter. Didn't help me at all. Historically speaking, I didn't, that didn't, I had no advantage. So we moved past that. Come on, I had plenty of coaches I didn't like. Some of the ones I didn't like, I ended up loving the most. Because they made me do stuff I didn't want to do. And that helped me get to a level that I would not have gotten to if I had not have done that extra work. Amen? And so now let's go back to our text. So there, our eyes are upon God, and we know God's going to pull us through. Second Chronicles 20, and then verse 12, we, we've already looked at that. And then verse 14, so I'm just going to paraphrase for the sake of time. So what do they do? They are seeking the Lord, then they go to the priest, and the priest is seeking the Lord, and the priest gets an answer, and he's coming back to bring the word of the Lord. And so here it is, verse 14. Then upon Jehazel, the son of um, Zechariah, the son of Benaniah, the son of Jeel, okay, all these sons, a Levite, the son of Asaph, came the spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. So here it is. The spirit of the Lord moves and he comes in order. In verse 15, and he said, hearken ye all of Judah. Now what happens? This comes after they said, we don't know what to do, but our eyes are on who? 
So if you come to that place in your life where you say, I don't know what to do, but my eyes are on you, I'm guaranteeing you that God's going to give you an answer. God's going to bring you an answer, and you have to be willing. Look at your neighbor and say, you got to be willing. Okay, so sometimes God's not going to tell you to do something that makes sense to you, that's comfortable to you. He is getting ready to tell them to do something that was very uncomfortable. But how many know if the situation is already uncomfortable, you ought to be willing to do something to change it? Sometimes God will tell you to sow seed because you need money, but then you're like, I need money. Why? Well, I need to give money. But he's trying to usher you into, come on, somebody, another level because you'll plant seed and get a harvest. He's trying to get your mind off of your need and have you become harvest-minded. Amen? And so what happens in this situation? Okay, look at your name and say, I'll do it even if it's not comfortable. We're going to do it at this church, so I'm just I'm letting you know right now. Bro, we, it's time to be past all that. Comfort zones don't do nothing but make people sleepy. And when they wake up, ain't nothing changed. And so we've got to move with action and expectation and do what God has called us to do. And he said... Hearken you all of Judah. So here it is. He's given the word. This has come from God. You sought him. You fasted and he, you prayed. And here's the answer. The second part of verse 15. Thus saith the Lord unto you, be what? Hmm? First thing God says, be not afraid or what? Dismayed by reason of this great multitude for the battle is not yours. God is saying, I got this, but one thing I need to make sure you're uh, clear on, you cannot be afraid because fear brings paralysis and it stops your faith walk. Fear brings paralysis and it stops your faith walk. You will not go forward in faith because of fear and you'll be like, well, what if, well, what if, well, what if, what, all this what if? And when you fall asleep saying what if and you wake up, you're still going to be in the same place. That's why you cannot allow fear to enter in. Fear brings with it imaginations. Come on, you start imagining all this crazy stuff you don't want. They could have been imagining just getting slaughtered, getting taken out. But God would not allow them to do that because their focus was right. Just like he won't allow you if your focus is right. Your focus on what he can do and not what you cannot do. He says, be not afraid or dismayed. Now, dismayed is another word for discouraged. You know, discouragement can lead to derailment. So what does that mean? You'll be discouraged, you're so discouraged, all of a sudden that discouragement knocks you off track. And all of a sudden now, you're not going into the direction of your dreams. You start settling, amen? Come on, you start settling for less. You start settling for plan B and maybe even plan C. All of a sudden, anything sounds good to you now. Because that discouragement, come on, derailed you and you bumped off. And now you are just out there running into stuff. You don't know where you're going. You're like, whatever, you know, people, that's what happens to people. They lose patience. They end up marrying anybody. They end up going and living anywhere. They end up doing anything because of that discouragement of what they were believing for never happened. And so they got derailed. And so now they're just settling along the way. Just whatever happens will happen. Whatever will be. Come on. But you can't do that if you are in the right place and your position is strong. How I many know when you're in your kingdom position, you don't compromise? Hey Amen. Look at your name and say, don't compromise. People be settling for stuff. Lowering standards. Why are you going to lower your standards? Hey Amen. You have high standards. The same standards you had all along, you ought to keep those. Don't settle. Don't settle. Wait for God's best to come along. Let God bring that to you. But you got to be a focus. And so we see this and he says, don't be discouraged. Don't be dismayed because of this great multitude for the battle is not yours, but God. Now, here it is. He gives them some instruction. Verse 16, he says, now you got to go out. 
Now you got to go out. Now you got to do something. And you're going to, verse 17, I'm just paraphrasing the way out, on the way out of this, but be still and know that I am God. So sometimes God leads you and you don't know what to do. He said, we don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you. And then God says, okay, he sends a word through the prophet and he says, don't be afraid. Don't be dismayed. Don't be discouraged because of this mountain that you're looking at because this is my fight. But I'm not going to defeat them and then send you a letter and tell you to come out and look at what I've done. No, you got to take some steps. You got to step out there. Come on, somebody. You got to step out there. Some of y'all, God's got things on your heart that you want to do, but it's going to take some faith. At some point, you're going to have to step out. You got to get out of that comfort zone. How many know it's comfortable, but sometimes you got to get out of that comfortable boat and to see God calls you to walk on the water. But you never know as long as you stay in that boat, as long as you stay where it's comfortable. But it's really not that comfortable. But it's okay. Well, it's better than nothing. God, what God has for you is not just better than nothing. God has great in store for you, but you got to be willing to press out. You got to be willing to go forward. You got to be willing to go out there and do what God says. Now, so they step out and he says, you be still and know that I am God. You don't have to fight this battle. So in verse 18, they worshiped. When you are in position, you will worship. In verse 18, they worship. Then verse 19, they praised. Y'all follow me. But they were facing insurmountable odds, but yet they were in kingdom position and their kingdom focus was right. And so they worshiped. And then they praised. And then verse 20, they believed. They believed God and they believed this prophet. He said, believe God and believe the prophet and you shall prosper. They just simply believed it. So those are three keys to victory. You might want to do this in your own life. Worship. Right there in the midst of your problem. I dare you to worship. Come on, I dare you to go ahead and give God a worship. I'm talking about humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and worship. And even though nothing has changed, you can't see a change. You don't even see a change in sight, but you're going to worship. They didn't see a change in sight at this time yet. They worshiped. Then after that, come on, somebody, they start to praise because now praise will give you a vision of it already been done. So now I'm going to go ahead and thank God because I already know he gave it to us. I already know we got this victory. So I'm going to thank God. And then guess what? Verse 20, they believed. So they believed. That's why I told you on your prayer list, don't write it down if, you don't believe, if you're not going to commit to believing to see it come to pass. And then verse 21, here goes some... Um, Stuff that doesn't make sense. Like, wait a minute, you don't go into an army like, okay, let's just break it down in church. I know we got some different, you know, we got some people in our church and we got a praise team and stuff. And, you know, some of our praise team, you know, they, they might be tougher than some of the other ones. They got the law enforcement background or whatever. But it's, not everybody has that. So what am I saying? Most of the time, you don't send the praise team first. You don't send them out there to take on a army of armed and dangerous. Y'all with me? You see how we have structure. You have some type of security. You have all this kind of stuff. Most of the time, if something's going on, they don't say, hey, go get the praise team. There's a fight in the parking lot. Can we get the praise team? Brother Dan comes out there. But that, but that. that ain't how you handle stuff. But in this situation, come on, I got to close. I know it's time to, we're going to do this prayer thing in a minute. But in this situation, what did they do? God told them. And so what did they have to follow? They had to follow whose instructions? Oh, which, did that make sense? Does that make sense to you? Like to go into, fate, go to a battle where people have assembled themselves together to kill you. And you're going to send some singers. You're going to send some singers out. Come on, somebody, before you. If anything, you would say, hold on. I know I got some skilled people in this army. Some, let's get together. Let's do it. Come on, get some rocks. Get some sticks. No, they sent forth the praisers. 
And so they went and they praised God. But then all of a sudden, the praises went forth. God heard the praises come up because that's truly a people who trust God. You don't trust God if you ain't praising him for your victory right now. I'm just going to tell you right now. If you got something you've been facing and you haven't been praising God on that thing, you don't trust him. So you need to fix that. If you've been complaining, talking about why and who and everybody that's come against you and you're magnifying that more than the victory, you need to change that. Because they praise, they sang praises unto God. And as a result of that, here's what God did. You can read this story in your own time. He, man, he set up these ambushments. And to make a long story short, the people who were coming to take out Israel, they turned on each other. And God caused them to kill each other. And he said, the battle's not yours, it's the Lord's. And so guess what happened? Jehoshaphat went and they got to a certain place where they can see and they saw all these dead bodies. All the people who were coming to take me out, I didn't fight none of them. And they're all dead. So you know what? The only work, the only labor they had to put in was what? Going in there, come on, some of y'all, you need to get in your Bible, man. You need to read this stuff. This will motivate you. They had to use their strength to gather, come on, somebody, to gather opportunities. There are opportunities now. The opposition was now turned into an opportunity, and they can walk in and gather what? Man, can, let me just put that. I, I'm not going to close until I agree. I got to get an amen on this. Can you put that back up there? I mean, going through it, Pastor. Just get ready to grab your stuff. Get ready. Oh, this has been a tough year. I know mine's been tough too, but I'm about ready to grab my stuff. I'm not, I'm not about to just, you know, just keep wasting time doing that same. I'm about to grab my stuff. Amen. And so they sent forth the praisers, but skip down. I'll find out what verse it is. Uh, verse uh, 25. Let's look at verse 25. And when Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away the spoil, Amen. come on, see, all that opposition has been trying to keep stuff from you. Yeah. It's been trying to keep stuff from you. But God's going to defeat that enemy. You're going to step on all those obstacles. And then now you just need to have enough strength. That's why you can't be up late worrying about stuff. You got to have enough strength to pick up your stuff. Because when it's time to pick it up, it's going to take some time. And he says, and they, they came, the people came to take away the spoil of them, and they found among them in abundance both riches with the dead bodies and precious jewels. Yeah. On who? Oh, some of y'all don't know. Your jewels could be right there with your opposition. But you can't let that opposition move you from your kingdom position and kingdom focus because then you now run away from opposition. Come on, somebody. I told you not all opposition is bad. You run to opposition. You don't run away from it. You run to it and watch God defeat it, and then you step on it. And so here's what happened. It was so much stuff that it took them three days. They went from, we don't know what to do, to, can y'all hurry up? I mean, how I many? I mean, we've been gathering all these riches for three days. I'm about tired of gathering riches. How did that happen? Hmm? What happened in this whole story? How did that happen? How did they go from being attacked, ready to be killed, to three days gathering riches? So let this be something that you meditate on in this coming year. Now, you should have something that you've been believing God for. You got a prayer list. But now this right here, we're going to just make sure that this is not just some um, thing that we're doing. You know, sometimes people do stuff in church because they just do it traditionally speaking. And we've even done that. We're like a word of faith church and we always say all this stuff. But we got traditions in here. But I'm ready to break the mold. I'm ready to step out into some stuff we've yet experienced. I'm ready for people to start getting some breakthroughs. I want us to be an evidence church, a church where God has shown himself strong. Now, you got your list right there. If you don't have it, 
Come on, you need to write it right now. Yes, brother, if you play something, we're going to pray. Come on, just write it down. Write something down. Just make sure you got it. And, and, and guys, if you guys got something, make sure your wives got it or something. Make sure you got something to put down. Everybody's believing big. We got to be. We got to be believing big. But we got to be willing to put our faith on it, man. I'm going to put my faith out there. And see, if, I, if I'm in kingdom, my kingdom position is straight and my kingdom focus is right, then now my expectations, right? Come on, won't your expectations go up? Won't they? Won't your expectations go up? Come on, my soul wastes out only upon God. What? For my expectation is from him. Psalm 62, 5. How many of you expect God to do something for you? Amen. And so now I want you to just stand to your feet. I want you to just go ahead and worship God in the beauty of his holiness. He's a worthy God. He's such a faithful God. Oh, he's just there for you. He loves you. He cares about you. And you know what? He cares about your desires. If, if you'd only trust him, what could he do? What could God do for the families of this church? What could God do this year, this coming year? What could God actually do for you? Hmm? Can you imagine it? Now, how are you going to feel? Hmm? How are you going to feel when what you believe God for comes to pass? How are you going to feel? Pretty good, huh? I mean, that's going to be wonderful, right? Isn't that awesome? But you know what happened in our story that I read to you today? When did they praise him? Huh? Come on. Oh, when, when did they worship him? Oh, see, see, we would have a praise a We would have a great celebration service. But the fact is, we're all here together today. And many of us have things that we can put down and we can do this as a united body. But many breakthroughs will come at different times. Your breakthrough may not come while you're at church. It might come while you're in your home. And so you can praise God. But today... You got an opportunity to praise him in advance. For what? Oh, yeah. See, he said the battle is not yours. It's the Lord's. So they didn't do any praising when they went to pick up the spoils. They just picked them up. See, some of you, when your good news comes in, you might not praise that much. Oh, because you already been praising. Come on, it was your praise, come on, that opened the door and brought it in. So you can't praise God if this is a what if. But if this is a done deal, huh? I'm going to put my prayers down on this altar because I know it's a done deal. So we've humbled ourselves before the Lord. You guys have even endured a longer service today. That's all part of it, see, because we got to go beyond feelings and emotions. And I can't just come in here. I probably would have done it myself. This would be a great day to get out early. But remember, everything within you is saying, go left. You've studied it. You've planned it out. And then God says, go right. Which way are you going? As far as I'm concerned, I'm going right every time. Every time. Amen. So now, you've humbled yourself, all right? Now, if you have something that you have committed to believing God for, amen, and you are committed to seeing it come to pass, amen, then you can put it down on the altar, not yet, but we're going to praise God. Amen. We're going to praise God. 
as if it's already done. Like, I would have never put it down if I didn't think he would do it. I would have never wrote it down if I didn't think he would do it. Y'all got pictures of it? I got pictures of mine, but I'm going to just take another one. I want to make sure I got a nice picture of this. Come on, man. Because what you're going to do is now, throughout the year, you're just going to thank him. You're going to have, you might have several praise parties along the way. You might be like, oh, Lord, I just want to thank you today because all my stuff is coming to pass. Oh, thank you, Jesus, again for doing that. Amen. Let me just put mine down and write. I'm just... I consider it done. I consider it all done. Amen. I consider it all done. I'm getting a hey, this this. I'm not about to have my faith stymied or stifled this year. I consider this to be the best. I think this is really the best. This might sound crazy. This somebody might think I'm really out there, but I think I'm we are in the best position at Word of Life that we've ever been in. I think we're in the best position that we've ever been in since the history of the church. You know why? Because we are now forced to say, God, we don't know what to do. But our eyes or on you. Woo! So then that means that we're going to have some opportunities to go through some sweatless victories. I'm talking about victory after victory because we didn't got out the way. Come on, somebody. Just praise them. Thank you, Lord. We thank you. I consider it done in Jesus' name. Come on. Put it up there. If you believe it, if you can celebrate them for it. We thank you, Lord. I receive it. I receive it. I receive the victory. I receive the manifestation. I receive the power. Oh, glory. Every prayer answered. Every prayer answered. Only you can do it, God. Only you can do it, God. We're going to trust you, Lord. Yes, God. Yes, God. Oh, Rabba Sheradabu Shata. Oh, Rabba Bakar Andaradabu Shata. Thank you, Lord. Woo! Yeah! I believe it. I believe it. I receive it. In the name of Jesus, every prayer on this altar. Oh, we receive it now, God. It's a done deal. And we make a pledge to you that we're going to rejoice and we're going to celebrate. And you know what's going to come forth? That'll be great testimonies. Some of y'all are going to come up to me and you're going to say, Hey, Pastor, I, you know what? I don't want to interrupt you, but I'm going to have to tell you this. You know what I mean? Because some of this stuff is going to come like that, boy, and you're going to be like, wow. And you're not going to be able to be quiet about it because we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Stretch your hands to heaven. I'm going to close this out a little bit different today. I'm sealing this anointing right here, man. Oh, yes, God. Thank you, Lord. Yes, God. Standing in full agreement. I'm in full agreement with every prayer, every family. Maybe you're watching us and you didn't get a chance to bring it to the altar in this house, but write it down and take it to an altar in your own house. God will still see it and respond to it. We thank you for this victory that 2019 will be the best year that we've ever had up to this point. We thank you, we praise you, and we honor you now. And we receive it all in Jesus' name. Now on the way out, I want you to tell three people. I want you to tell three people, I meant it. So I'm going to praise him for it. All right? Tell three people, I meant that. that I meant it. And so I'm going to praise him for it. You'll know you meant it if you praise him. You're going to praise him all year. And stuff is going to be coming to pass. Amen? Stuff is going to be coming to pass. Stretch your hands to heaven. I'll do the closing prayer today. Father, in the name of Jesus, bless these your people. Strengthen them and empower them. 
Lord, give us that faith we need to press and to walk into our victory. I thank you now, God, that opposition and obstacles have now led us into opportunity. And we receive the greater victory now in Jesus' name. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, my ushers.